right, so let's look at the polysilicon emitter as a design concept to improve BJT performance. Okay, we just talked about various doping modifications and why they are advantageous and why they can also lead to detrimental effects on the current game. Let's look at the polysilicon emitter uh, as an alternative. So again, so again, in the last segment, we stepped through these design concepts and they dealt with um, uh, increasing emitter doping, increase emitter doping, but don't get band gap narrowing. Decrease base doping without current crowding due to resistive losses, meaning you don't want to uh, reduce conductance uh, so much. Here, this flow of holes over here, you don't want to have resistive losses, and you don't want to have the early effect, remember? You want to have a large VA. Collect the doping, bring that down through the capacitance, but without the Kirk effect, effect, and then reduce this as much as possible without punch. Okay, that, those were the recipes. Now, one thing we can also discuss now is, could you do something to reduce this whole flow? Okay. So far, we have dealt with what can we do to make IC effectively larger. We have not talked about a recipe to really make the whole flow um, smaller. This would Reducing this guy will increase beta, right? So let's look at a strategy for that. Okay. Um, one strategy here is graded base transport. Uh, heterojunctions, Shockley transistor, we'll talk about the polysilicon emitter to suppress DP, which should have been that one, make that smaller, and um, effectively suppress or reduce this base current here. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. Now, I had shown this sketch before of a device so the modern devices really have a polysilicon emitter up here. And the goal is to reduce this current flow. And we'll step through some of the math and the explanation of how this works. All right, we'll take a 1D cut, as usual. And instead of just having an NPN device, we now have this polysilicon area. And if you go way back when in the course we talked about crystalline material and polysilicon material, this is in polysilicon you have smaller crystallites, you have uh, they're budding together, forming still a solid, but there's no long range order between these crystallites. You have more scattering, and it behaves differently than uh, pure silicon. It is still a, a, a good conductor but it's not as good of a conductor as uh, silicon, and we'll see some effects on that here in the design of this emitter. Okay, so the overall emitter is now a heterostructure, if you will, of polysilicon and high-quality silicon. Okay, we're after understanding this whole flow here, okay? And the reduction of that whole flow is the goal of these calculations. Now, before we, uh, so the, the idea here is that you, uh, the, you modify the whole flow as sort of sh kind of shown here where you have more scattering in the poly for the holes and therefore reducing the whole flow. So let's look at some of the math. But before that, let's compare it to our quote-unquote ideal device before the introduction of polysilicon in the emitter. Remember we had written down differential equations and solutions thereof for the minority carrier density in, uh, 
at the junction leading to the left, right? We had a linear drop in the minority carriers here, which are the holes, and at this metal interface, we have an infinite um, um, surface recombination velocity, so that the minority carriers, the holes, uh, vanish completely. So at the semiconductor metal interface, all the minority carrier holes are gone. The boundary condition was zero, or infinite uh, metal um, recombination velocity. And we had computed some P1 that depends on the uh, voltage we have applied uh, on this junction. Right? We've done this now multiple times. Now, remember these expressions? We have a diffusion component to the current. We are looking at minority carrier holes. We always have assumed that there is no drift term, so we drop the drift out of the drift diffusion equation. And um, we have a uh, current that we calculated from here that we can now express as the minority carrier injection uh, number P1 and the drift um, uh, the diffusion perm dp and the overall length of our emitter we. So that's the width of the emitter or the length of the emitter. So current or the slope is determined by the amplitude here and a zero value here, a diffusion coefficient and the length of this emitter region. We've done this now multiple times. Now compared to this new system where we have introduced a poly abutted next to the semiconductor. So what happens here is that the surface uh, uh, velocity, recombination velocity, is finite. Meaning, you're not perfectly absorbing all the minority carrier holes at that interface. Okay, So your boundary condition has changed. It goes from zero to finite. Let's assume some value P2. The differential equation that governs this didn't change. We didn't change introduce recombination generation in this region. All we're doing is we're saying that the, elect uh, the holes, the minority holes, are not accepted by the poly as well as they would have been accepted in recombining in a metal. Okay. So we write down the same expressions as what we had above. We have the poly uh, whole current as dp over dx, but um, the, d, uh, the dp we can, uh, um, with assuming a linear, put, a linear drop, is now different. It is smaller. Okay. So the poly current is going to be smaller, and by this boundary condition p2. Okay, so we reduce the whole current um, that is flowing in the emitter by introducing a poly. All right, what's this um, uh, flow that the poly will support? It's some saturation velocity times P2, that's the number of carriers that are being accepted uh, flowing in, into the, in the poly. Okay, now with those two expressions, this guy equal this guy, I can solve this for the unknown P2, and that is only a function of the saturation velocity that was introduced here. Okay, So it becomes a property of the poly. Okay, And it, the term becomes still a function of P1. Okay, Now, I can build the ratio of the poly current versus the original current. Okay? And I can carry this calculation through. So here the poly current I use this expression and for the good current I use this one. I plug it in and I have a ratio that now depends on so, uh, surface uh, recombination velocity in the poly and the length of WE 
and the fusion, uh, the fusion coefficient of the minority holds. Okay. Now, just for argument's sake, let me pull this one uh, under here, the Vs, and I can easily see if Vs is finer. Well, let me start out with if Vs would still be infinite, like in metal, this term would vanish, right? So there's no difference. My derivation would be all the same. But any finite value of saturation velocity, not being infinite, adds a term here, which means the poly current is being reduced. So we're reducing this current over here, which is what we want. Okay? So that's a, a positive effect. And so far we haven't found anything that is uh, showing up negatively. Okay? All right. Now, again, we have uh, reduced this current component. Uh, let's look at the forward component one more time the electrons that are injected at this interface, and are they affected? And the answer is no, right? We have calculated this before. This is now the minority carrier electrons in the P-side. They drop linearly. Our expression for the current flowing that way is independent on what we did on the poly side. Okay? Make sense? So. This current component here, which we want, appears to be unaffected by our muckery here with um, the poly. Okay. So, uh, here are the two expressions we just had. Here's the forward current. Let me see the effect now on beta. So again, I'm doing my uh, normal expansion. I'm interested now in the uh, uh, ratio of my, f my, my, uh, my, the beta we can achieve with a poly. So I'm interested in the final uh, uh, current over the final current in, with my poly base uh, emitter. But we call it the base current uh, by poly being present. All right, I'm going to do my usual stuff here, right? I'm introducing the same coefficient on two sides of the ratio. And I do that because this is my original transistor, and I had just calculated the improvement due to the introduction of the poly. Okay? This guy. Okay? So... Let me multiply this through. This is now the equation which we know and love already, so nothing new there. That's my original beta that is now being modified by this term here. Okay? All right. So what's next? We assume that the uh, surface velo uh, recombination velocity is smaller than the... Uh, emitter uh, diffusion uh, velocity, okay? So let's kill this term here, okay? And let's reason for this for a second. We had sketched here, going out on a limb a little bit, we had this P1 here and the P2, right? And we said, um, this is W E here, and we have a uh, diffusion um, a DP here. Okay. Now, what would happen if this would be uh, very small? It would just decay rather rapidly. So, this W P uh, over uh, DP over W E is not a small component. There is a finite slope. Okay, and we're assuming that this Vs is smaller than smaller than that. Okay? If that's the case, we can cancel this term over here. We get rid of this guy. And then look at this. 
WE here, WE here, TP here, TP here. We're left with a beta with poly that has now become apparently independent of the width of the emitter. That's gone. No emitter width. And it has become independent of the depletion, um, the diffusion coefficient in the emitter as well. So that's pretty interesting, right? So what's left is still emitter doping, which we had discussed, and the base doping. Okay. So poly suppresses the base current and increases the gain. It's actually being used all the time now um, in all modern devices. Uh, the question is now, why does it only suppress the whole current and not the electron current? And the answer is that polysilicon is not an ohmic contact. It acts as a rectifying contact. It blocks the easy passage of holes, but lets electrons pass through. Okay, so that's the underlying uh, benefit that the material property of polysilicon allows electrons to flow freely, but it suppresses hole flow. Okay. Okay. Now, we've done this here as a summary again with the uh, polysilicon emitter. And um, that's the conclusion on this segment here. With a polysilicon emitter, yeah, this is exactly what I just shown. Uh, with this polysilicon emitter, we can ramp up beta uh, with apparently no uh, detrimental effects. So let's um, go to the next segment, which will be the last one on design aspects, which is short base transport. I'll see you in the next section.